Someone in the uh, chat room was asking, hi guys, what is the most exciting news on extraterrestrials? Have we covered that already? Or? Hi, Barry. You know, I, I, th I think the most uh, exciting news about extraterrestrials is there are a lot of places they could live. Mm -hmm. You know, just 20 years ago, I, I, I mentioned Barnard Star, which back when SETI began in the early 60s, it, there was speculation that, you know, there might be a planet here. There, there was some evidence that was wobbling of the planet. It turns out that wasn't the case. Uh, but it was. it's only been in the last 20 years that we have been able to detect planets around other stars. So I think that is the the huge discovery. There's a lot of real estate out there that is potentially inhabitable. Uh, and and now we're realizing that Earth-like planets are, are uh, all over the place as well, at least super-Earths. The other exciting thing is uh, over the last 20, 30 years, we've come to better understand the extremes that life can live on here on Earth. You know, I'm talking extremes of life, like um, the the frozen tundra of, of the Arctic, um, hydrothermal vents, acid hot springs, the core of nuclear reactors. So once life takes hold, it can survive. And so it's looking all in all the more likely that our notion of what's a habitable world may need to be expanded to take into account the variety of environments that extraterrestrial life could proliferate in. So, so it seems like everything that we're learning in the past decades is more and more um, support that there could be alien life out there. Some people think it's already been here. I haven't seen it, so, so I, I need to see the evidence. You're, you're a psychologist, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I wonder, like, what, given the work you're doing, like, what do you think, what's your relationship with, like, human imagination? Because, like, when you're dealing, it seems like when you're dealing with the, you know, SETI, um, the imagination takes you in all these kind of like fantastical places, you know, like Star Trek to conspiracy theories about Area 51. And it, it, it seems like the imagination takes you in so many places that can distract from the reality of the actual science. But at the same time, that imagination can keep people interested in the work that you do. Do you, is there? Like well, I, yeah, I think so. You're right. Imagination is great for engaging people. There's something imaginative about the prospects of there being intelligence out there. But if you look at the, the nature of how science happens, that imagination plays an important role at the earliest stages as well. So right. that, you know, imagination doesn't prove anything, but imagination is great at generating ideas. You know, when, when Kepler was trying to understand the motions of the planets, he had this idea about the planets are moving within these perfect geometrical solid proportions. It turned out it was wrong, but it was really helpful to start thinking about things. So I think the, the, what you need to always keep in mind is it, uh, imagination is great for generating hypotheses, and then you got to test those hypotheses, and that's where some concrete data comes in.